put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Splinter Stop Blacklist, video game review. Sadly following the events of Conviction because you know, when I first heard that they were recasting Sam, I figured that maybe it was a reboot, that they were cutting ties with Conviction. Certainly, it's you know, you have to wonder how long can Sam Fisher possibly go on. But no, it follows Conviction. So anyway, after the events of Conviction, Third Echelon is disbanded and its remnants reorganized into the newly formed fourth echelon, which Sam commands. And they operate outside of the law and are basically not accountable to anyone. Now, a group known as the Engineers threaten terrorist attacks on US soil if you know the US military does not pull out of its overseas bases. So this is very relevant and forces a debate, which you know all good villains do. And this is a very charismatic villain, too. It's also worth noting that some of the things that the engineers do are some of the war crimes that the US has also committed in you know more recent years. So the game basically plays it straight, but I just thought that was interesting. The, the game plays it towards the American audience. Now, the an early level of this takes place in Benghazi, thanks Obama, where conviction was very much a personal plot, yet you still, you know, were fighting a political, you know, yeah, there was still a political plot to take take care of. Here you do have a wounded friend and the you know there are some personal twists but the you know the focus is protecting the US. In fact early on a character actually asks Sam this isn't another one of your personal vendettas. Is it you know it's always good when a character can channel the audience reaction. Now, I based this review on having completed the campaign once, which took me ten and a half hours, and if I were to try to buy everything, you know, I would probably have to play it two or three times that amount of time, but, you know, I did this without grinding, and I could still get the equipment that I needed. Now, the I spent seven hours on the side missions and 14 hours on the multiplayer reaching rank 26 over the course of two weeks. Now, the, the plot moves fast and there's a lot of detail to it. It's very cool. It is somewhat cliche, though. Now, the cutscenes are of an appropriate length, long enough to have weight and you know, further characters and plot, but not so long that you get impatient. Now, this is the first in the series that does not star Michael Ironside, which is, of course, a great loss. So they recast Bland Fisher, Sam Fisher. I swear it's not the new guy who is, is to blame for Sam being Bland. He does what he can with the material he's given. But he does end up bland. It, you know, really the only thing with the new guy is that he does sound too young because Sam is supposed to be like middle-aged and yeah. He's also got a bit of a Jack Bauer thing going on which makes sense for, you know, more recent, yeah. They recast him with a younger actor in, in order to have an actor who could also do motion capture. 
Now, there is some cool dialogue and humor, banter, and the relationships between the characters are very clear. Now, the... the there are some returning characters, and, you know, characters are archetypes, including the nerd who provides some comic relief and, at times, is kind of annoying. Sam's daughter also returns, in part to remind us of the BS that Conviction pulled, but they do get some good drama with the relationship there as well. Basically, you can call her in between missions, and it, it has that thing of, you know, the, the let's go with operative, the, the operative who's out in the field, and, you know, he's not really allowed to tell his loved ones what's going on and such. And then the person who's on the other side, you know, who's back home and who has to worry about. And, you know, yeah. And at the same time, she can't, you know, she knows he has to be there. It, things will go horribly wrong if he isn't there. So, yeah. Now... I realize this has no bearing on the game whatsoever, but I feel I must mention at one point I was kind of half paying attention to what was being said in a briefing, and I swear the character said we slept together, and you know, double take and read the subtitles. No, she said slapped together. But yeah, that's one way to make sure the audience is listening. Excuse me. Now the characters excuse me, in this, are always super serious. Grimm is not just the name of a main character, it's also the mood of everyone at all times. They argue a lot, and it gets dangerously close to becoming tiring and white noise, but, you know, it is entirely unlike Max Payne 3, where right from the start it's tiring and white noise and stays that way for the entirety of that mercifully short game. I guess I had at least one more in me. Now, the I personally did not have problems with, I understand some have, but maybe it's been fixed since then, problems downloading, installing, loading progress, or with the cloud, which means my tasteful nudes are safe, which I appreciate. Now, as per Tom Clancy, rest in peace, he you know, this this came out before he died, and I, yeah, this very much lives up to his talent. It's mature, realistic, international, political spy thriller, very much about current events. Now, there are some killer spare choices, but they apparently don't make much of a difference. The, this is aggressive stealth, much like Conviction. The control is some somewhat stiff counterintuitive and not fluid, but there are at least only a few keys you have to keep track of. But one key will not have only one function, so open, jump, and peek are the same key, and if you're trying to go through a door and on the other side you would like to close the door, because enemies notice open doors, even if they don't see it being opened, or closed ones if they were open, before and yeah let's say on the other side there's maybe also a pipe then Sam will jump to the pipe close the door with him on the other side on the wrong side back where he came from or close it with him on the right side and yeah it also you know there's one key for picking up a body or picking up that guy's gun I don't know why it's not hold for one of them and press for the other one, but, you know, or, you know, holding a different button, you know, to toggle the function. Yeah. It's, you know, especially with opening and closing doors, I feel like if you just want to open the door and go through it, you could just press the button, but then if you want to open it and close it after you, you hold the button. I, yeah. It doesn't happen often, but it really shouldn't happen at all. Basically, I like to point to the original Hitman game. 
you know, Hitman Codename 47, where you point to something with the mouse, you right click it when, when the icon for interaction comes up, you scroll through the options and then you click to choose. If one of the options require you to be closer or further away, those are grayed out. And you can also cancel in there. If, yeah. With that, you never you never got it wrong, you know. And I appreciate today it wouldn't be with right clicking, but I fail to see why it couldn't have a proper toggle or scroll through functions function. Now, there are some long load times. Overall, the game is good, not great. Now, the it is a third-person shooter with stealth when really it should be a stealth game with third-person shooter elements or even better purely stealth game you know this has nothing on the trilogy or double agent now the this is a console port and I can imagine plays better on the consoles the the user reviews for the PC version on Metacritic and only the PC version have, while they have 78 positive ones, they have 18 neutral ones and 50 negative ones. So, yeah, it probably is the PC one version that's particularly not great. Now, you are aided in your missions by the Strategic Missions Interface, or SMI, SHMI. You can't always tell where you can climb or drop from or take cover some places. It looks like you can, but you actually can't. Now, if you're caught in the open, you're probably going to die. This originally had an interactive torture sequence. That's, yeah, that's in bad taste. This is very, very sleek. You you know every movement, the way you handle guns, everything you know look you look really badass. Now there are nearly a dozen different gadgets, and that's in addition to your goggles and the optic cable that you use to peek under doors. Now some enemies have equipment or are in areas or such that disable some of the gadgets that you were depending on. So that's very cool. Now, the game sometimes allows zip lining or mountain flossing, which, let's be honest, it's repelling. And you, you know, you can sometimes, you know, climb a wall, enter a building through a window, or pull an enemy over a ledge, attack from above, just, you know, yeah, using pipes and, yeah, such to climb and scale and you can use equipment from hanging up you know if it only takes one hand then you know he can hang on with the other hand and you can also fire your pistol from there now you cannot jump from one ledge to another the way you can in Assassin's Creed basically if you you know if you want off a ledge, you're gonna just go off it, which doesn't, you know, you can do that, you know, safely, but it does mean you can't jump from one place to another with the enemy underneath, not at all noticing, so that puts a nice limitation on the stealth without it being, you know, too much of a limitation, yeah. Now, you know, climbing up and down is on two separate keys so that you know less confusion there sneak you know you you choose whether to sneak up on enemies or kill them from a distance or you know take them out from a distance the mouse wheel cycles between your guns both of them i don't know why it doesn't just cycle through the gadgets you can carry far more of those than guns it doesn't even scroll to the special gun which is either a stun gun or a crossbow with darts for sleeping gas, EMP, sticky shocker, or noise maker. Yeah, there's a lot of really awesome stuff in this game. Now, when you throw, you know, when you get ready to throw a gadget of some kind, 
you will get an arc prediction and you can either you, know, you can even cancel throwing so that's very good now the the mark and execute system returns and you you know basically you earn executing with melee or stealth kills and you get three uses which you use at once so if you only mark one person you don't get two more on the same earn and you know once you've used it you can then earn it again and use it again it does have a red indicator which is a little annoying because it means that you really yeah basically every other red indicator in the game means that you've been spotted by an enemy enemy or are being attacked or such now the you can also use mark and ex, you know you can mark someone to track them and you can use other guns to execute as well now so that's that's great you can also now you know execute mark someone earn another execute then execute again in a single movement you don't have to stand still as apparently you had to in conviction it's you know haven't played conviction since yeah the one time i played it through now the i suppose that about covers that now the yes the yes if you are This is less streamlined than Conviction, but yeah, some streamli streamlining still, most games today are, sadly. And this is less streamlined than that. And, you know, because there are guns like Kane and Lynch, it does still have some challenge and player agency, unlike, you know, Assassin's Creed. Now... It has a very good cover system, whether you're, you know, whether you're sneaking or shooting from cover. And it's very easy to move from cover to cover, even within the same, you know, just to a different side of the same cover. Although it does, again, sometimes, the, the thing is that the same button will also climb instead of taking you know, instead of moving to the next cover, yeah, that can really screw you over. Now, the... When you are using melee or hacking, it's basically one key, and you either press it or hold it down. You know, this is fine for multiplayer, but I do wish they had quick time events for single player, similar to Hitman Absolution for the melee there. And, it's, you know, it gets especially dull when there are, you know, there are a couple of places in this where just you know, for several minutes on end, you're just supposed to go from one place to another and just press the button to, you know, fix something or the like. And, yeah, it basically feels like a slightly interactive cutscene and a quick time event, you know, yeah, quick time events would have made it much more, you know, engaging. Now, when you melee, you, you know, if you just press the button, you just melee. But if you hold it down, you take a human shield. And when you've taken a human shield, it doesn't mean you have to start shooting people. It can just be a quick way to move him to where you want to drop him off or the like. And then, you know, from human shield, excuse me, you can, you know, you can use him as a human shield and just shoot people. You can knock him out. You can throw him forward. And, you know, you can also, from 
human shield, you can knock him out and just leave him where he is. If you just press the button, or if you hold the button, Sam will knock him out and immediately, you know, pull him over the shoulder and be ready to carry him. And the, let's see, that, you know, and, and when you're carrying, again, you can just drop him off or you can throw him, which is useful for, you know, throwing him over a ledge or the like to hide him. But sometimes it bounces off, so, yeah, that's annoying. And we do also get some convenient body-sized boxes as in Hitman Blood Money and Hitman Absolution and you know as popularized by Dick Cheney. You can Assassin's Creed climb with sprinting into walls and such where you know yeah as long as you hold it down Sam will as quickly as you can move in in the direction that you're going. You can also just move you know manually jumping and the like. Now the I suppose that yeah and, and you can crouch sprint which is very useful for silently quickly moving. Now this does right what a lot of recent shooters does wrong. If you can't shoot from a certain angle the crosshairs will just become an X. So if you if you're not seeing an X and you press the trigger, Sam will actually shoot immediately. He won't like stick his head out and then shoot. No, he will actually do it. I I you know it baffles me that you know games like Max Payne 3 and Grand Theft Auto 4, you know, you have to you know get out and then yeah, when you when you're focus aiming, when you're using the crosshairs you know, you're getting ready to shoot. You're not just thinking, okay, I want to shoot in that basic direction, and then afterwards, you see, you know, it always messes up the timing, and yeah, not the case here. Now, the, the trifocal goggles return with night vision and sonar pulse, and whenever the pulse comes, it, it updates, and it highlights pipes and enemies, but it is only a pulse. It won't come by every second. So sometimes you're waiting and hoping that, yeah, that that it's not going to mess up your time. Or you may have to just hope that you can tell where they are without it. So that's, again, a great stealth limitation. Now, the, the, the idea of stealth is to give the player a number of tools at his disposal but not make it make him invincible. And yeah, this gets it right, you know, similar to Thief and Hitman Commandos. Now, I suppose that covers the sonar. Now, the, the climbing is very similar to Prince of Persia. So, hold on, I was... Actually, yeah getting to that in a second. The first three of the first three Splinter Cell games were amazing, although they were slowly moving towards letting you freely kill using, you know, giving you a knife and letting you kill via ledges and such, where originally basically you had to shoot them and shooting was slow and very very realistic initially to the point where it got frustrating. This still has linear progression through levels and we now have objective markers for close again similar to other recent games so you're you know yeah you basically know where to go and you you look for a direct path or somewhere you can use acrobatics because they are like with you know, Prince of Persia, where you basically can only climb one way. It's not like Assassin's Creed, where you can climb pretty much anywhere you want. And that means that you basically know what path to take, or you know which paths are open to you, and you're just putting your attention towards sneaking there, rather than trying to guess and sneak, which 
was frustrating in some of the earlier games. Now it does have the Assassin's Creed climbing problem. You can't tell where or how far you're going to go from you know pressing the button once. And yeah, basically if you're pressing let go, you might, you know, I'm not gonna break into the frozen song, but you might climb down slightly or you might drop off somewhere and yeah you'll really want to know which is which and this is a like with the aforementioned control issues it's not often a problem but still really shouldn't be a problem ever the Wii version of Prince of Persia Forgotten Sands showed you where you'd be going if you press a button I don't know why they only did it for that one game. It, yeah, it would be extremely useful. And again, it's not, it doesn't show you exactly how you're supposed to get there. It just shows you if you go that way, you will end up there. It's not, yeah, it's useful without being, you know, again, taking away agency. And it's not even that that game was like completely amazing. It's just it had some good aspects that among that being one of them. And the you can stalk and use noise to distract almost all the time. You can you know even if you're just running around as Sam, he can you know yeah verbally you know distract with uh, yeah. Now, for the stealth, you can plan. You don't have to just react to the circumstances. You note patrol paths and guard posts, and, and note that sometimes these intersect, and they can change if you reload checkpoint and such. And note that they check everywhere. I was literally like, at one point, I was like climbing on, you know those houses that have just, you know, I don't know, let's go with half a meter of distance between them and the ground. At one point, I was sneaking around in there, and I wasn't covered, so I wasn't noticed, but a guard came by, shined, you know, sh shined? Sh shown. He shone a flashlight in there, and yeah, if I hadn't been in cover, he would have noticed me. So, yeah, be careful. And the... Yeah, and, and it's really cool. These sections where you're sneaking are not linear. So again, like Thief, Hitman, Commandos. And the, you know, basically there are a number of different places you, you know, that you, yeah, there, there are different paths. And you choose which one to use and you choose how fast to move through it and yeah how exactly you you know whether you're gonna kill everyone or try to leave everyone still standing or yeah and it has a number of angles that enemies can come from so no matter what your approach be careful be aware and the levels are very organic but also have a lot of options for good stealth it's, it's a real strength of the game, the level design. Now, you can almost always stealth through this game. There are times where the enemies are already looking for you or looking for someone and there are chases and the such. But overall, you choose how to play it, but stealth is rewarded, similar to Hitman Absolute Blood Money. And the this is you know tense stealth and intense and very fun. There are times where you're forced to use stealth, which is appropriate because it is a stealth game or a game in a stealth series. And the as I've already mentioned, some the enemies will investigate everything that is out of order. 
basically if you toggle a light switch if you open or close a door again even if they don't see it happening if they just return to from a patrol and they see the light has changed or a door yeah and this is not only a danger to you it's also a tool again similar to thief you can use that to lure them into a place you know lure them away from their you know patrol path or guard post and either knock them out or just avoid them altogether now the if you are seen you can you know disappear basically yeah try to get away from them and yeah and after a little while they will sort of forget you they will be less alert now the using stealth in this does feel like the the tougher way to play through it and yeah it almost feels like they want you to shoot your way through it or they program the game thinking that people would shoot their way through it stuff can be very satisfying in this there is an indicator for when they are noticing you which is very useful the and if when you are noticed there will be a white silhouette showing the last place they saw you which you can use to lure them to there and you know get a better angle on them now you can set up traps in multiplayer as well as campaign or single player now there are some special features to some of the hold on actually yeah some have had problems with the graphics I did not they were you know great and it still ran well now the dynamic physics engine is quite nice you can almost always use a 360 degree camera now there were a few times where basically if you're in cover and you're trying to shoot someone below you you know not not directly below you but just like you're in cover here, the guy's down here, you should be able to peek over yeah sometimes it has trouble with that which yeah kind of annoying now as I already mentioned you you can in this grind money to buy and upgrade your equipment you know equipment, guns, your suit you know for armor, stealth, carry capacity, gun handling and there are some that have special features and this goes for multiplayer as well and counters for what others might use against you and there are three separate custom you know yeah ones you can customize for you know for the single player for the the spies of multiplayer for the mercs of multiplayer so yeah that is quite you know you you get to customize a nice amount now the ship the paladin is your base and you can upgrade that some too now some of the upgrades there are make the game way too easy and sadly it kind of forces you to get some of them including the the sonar I mean it's it's another one of those things where they maybe kind of designed the game to where if you didn't use that you couldn't quite get through it but yeah it's still kind of annoying to be forced into yeah using something you rather wouldn't and that you didn't really start out with now the checkpoint saving does get frustrating if you die or if if it goes wrong very close to the next checkpoint along the missions you sometimes come across high value targets which means that you have to try to take them alive and bag and tag them because they're like specifically wanted for you know great crimes great meaning larger events I use it in a pejorative sense now the 
among your equipment is the tri-rotor which is basically this little flying drone thing enemies will shoot it down on sight much like yourself but you can use it for recon it comes with sticky shocker darts and you can blow it up to you know attack enemies you can even retrieve it if you yeah and it steers like a helicopter so you know basically you can you know you turn it with the mouse you can do strafing runs and you can send it up and down as well as back and forth so yeah and the mercs in multiplayer also have that although it doesn't fire sticky shocker darts but it's yeah and you get to fire off an automatically flying drone so yeah again kind of I'm not sure people are big fans of drone. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure if the if the developers just figured that this would be really cool. I mean, I mean, drone warfare is already very much like a video game. I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. Yeah, the to the to the drone operator. I mean, not the victims. Okay soapbox at least for now left anyway the when you use the optic cable under a door you can zoom and you can noise attract you hide in the dark and in silence the brilliant stealth mechanics originated in, in thief and basically when you're in the dark you you know lights on your you know your suit will glow to indicate that you're in the dark and you know again toggling light switches can be very useful for that and as for silence walking speed and whether doors and windows are open or not are useful for that yeah and some enemies actually carry flashlights and such, as already mentioned, and have equipment similar to yours or heavy armor. You'll want to sneak, you know, use sneak kills, which means, you know, you have to be above or behind them and you can melee them. Some of them have full body SWAT shields, so yeah. And some of them have a helmet, which means excuse me, it's at least two headshots. One to just knock the helmet off and, you know, if you're in co-op, you can dual execute, so both players will fire off one shot at him and the second shot will kill him. Or you can also, you know, execute once to knock off the helmet and then gas him or similar. Now, the you basically choose what to do and it counts as one of the three play styles and you can replay a level to try and master the other play styles for that assault means you know basically everyone you kill when you haven't you know if if you're noticed or such it counts as assault but it allows so it allows you to use loud weapons you can bash through doors which knocks down the guy right on the other side yeah and the loud weapons yeah they're maybe more powerful more coarse more you know yeah very very cool and the panther means that you're remaining hidden but killing and the ghost means you're knocking out without being seen or preferably you're not touching them at all so yeah very challenging and a lot of fun now the levels are quite cool and all based on real locations including a water plant a mountain a mansion and some areas around the middle east now the and you you know and another train level where you are inside and on the train, I, you know, uh, outside the train, because the developers know that those make some of the best and most memorable levels of the series. 
now you you're secretly entering a location not meaning that you don't kill or you aren't discovered once you're in there but you got there secretly and you get to a signal being transmitted or a bomb that you have to disable or an you know an enemy camp or the like and not all guards are your enemy and there are sometimes time limits now the I should also say that the see, the levels and missions can sometimes be somewhat monotone. Basically, the same area will appear several times in one level or, you know, or a similar one at least, and uh, you know separate levels reuse similar ideas such as using a guy who worked with the terrorists you know yeah and the you cannot just run into an area and just shoot up everything but you know if you use the tools at your disposal and keep moving you can shoot your way through most of this now the side missions sort of basically follow the plot of the, you know, or they're connected to the plot of the campaign, but the side missions are very samey, and given that you can play them at any time, and you don't have to play them, you know, they, they fit anywhere in the timeline of the campaign, and yeah, it's yeah you you it doesn't feel that important you might say and uh, like i mentioned they're they're samey there are four different people that give you these side missions and each of them give you very similar missions each time so basically there are four types of these missions and you can skip them and not really lose much of anything now, when you, for earning or, you know, grinding money, you can replay missions and or side missions and basically, yeah, any mission you play in this, you can replay. And side missions, you can always play cooperatively and most of them you can play by yourself. There's only one of the four kinds of missions that you have to be two people in. And when you're playing co-op, you can revive the other player, similar to other co-op experiences. You don't get a server list, so you are at the mercy of the matchmaking, which will pair, you know, the, the untrained with the masters to the frustration of both parties. Now, when you choose, you know, getting into a match, you you know for for cooperative play you choose by level and you know if you're hosting you can you know choose type of level and such in in multiplayer where you also you know you go by mode of you know game mode and you can invite and have private matches but yeah you can't yeah you don't get a server list or server filters such as difficulty or the like. Now, and and for co-op, the you know I mentioned that the equipment on Sam glows. Initially, it glows green. You can buy other colors. In multi, in, in co-op, you know one will be green and the other will be blue, or at least if they don't change. So yeah, you can see where the other guy is, and if there's you know, if there are some objects in between you, there will be a white outline similar to the last known location, and you will be marked on each other's mini radar. Now, the the side mission types are fighting off waves of enemies, or sneaking in and hacking, or similar. Yeah, it 
doesn't is not the most compelling. And the some of the co-op, like you get, you know, dual, I already mentioned dual execute. There are other things where you can both do the same, you know, you help each other, similar to the co-op of double agent. But where that works fairly smoothly here gets a little awkward. Like if you're both trying to get over a, a hill where you have to help each other, the first person who goes over will get on the left side. And the other one who approaches when he presses to, you know, to complete the, he will also go to the left side. So then they kind of have to start over and you have to very carefully be sure to be on the right side and then press. Yeah, it's kind of, it's not so much that you have to be in a very specific position. It's the fact that if you're not in the right position, you'll just force your, force you both to start over. It gets really annoying, but on the plus side, co-op does offer you the very cool experience of covering your buddy with a drone. So, yeah. Now, among the weapons are pistols, shotguns, assault rifles. There are dozens of guns in this. And you can use a sticky camera with zoom and sleeping gas. You know, you have smoke grenades in case you want to treat the enemy to some smoked Sam. I'll be here all week, folks. There are sticky noise makers. You can carry one pistol and one heavier weapon. And the heavier ones you can replace from bodies and you can restock at the relatively frequent boxes. If you're seen, it's basically only for the one area. There are four difficulty settings that determine how fast the AI spot you, how, how much damage they do, how much ammo you have, and there are some ability limitations on you as well. And the game is challenging even on easy. It's one of the rare recent games that are actually challenging. So yeah, that's always commendable. Now you choose difficulty setting before a mission starts or you can also change it during and then it will just you will have to replay from the most recent checkpoint now you die very fast from being shot and the you know you are going up against some attack dogs where you know if they grab your arm you have to mash the melee button to get them off and while that's happening you're a sitting duck you know and there are the there are Drones, basically, they, you know, you know the mouse bot from, from, sorry, I am such a nerd. Basically, I'm not sure I have a reference for this that isn't sci-fi. Yeah, think of, you know, it's, it's about the size of a hand. It runs on wheels. It has this red laser light on the front of it. If it spots you, not only does it alert others, it freaking kamikazes on you. Kamikaze, yeah, something like that, and yeah, and and once, even if you stop it, there's a drone operator close by, and he'll just send out another one. So yeah, and there are of course the the old standby of dodging lasers. The multiplayer is addictive. Basically, you can do everything you can in single player. But the enemies might be able to do the same thing, or more likely, they have equipment that is specifically made for taking you down. It plays somewhat like Assassin's Creed multiplayer, but not exactly, in part because of the first-person shooter slash third-person shooter elements. So it's not like if you've played one, you've also played the other, which, I mean, basically if you've played one of the Assassin's Creed games in multiplayer, you've more or less played at least the ones that came before it also you know new modes come along in newer games but yeah overall doesn't change much but that's also the same series so yeah and the rules do change some along the way but here you know I've played you know I've played every Assassin's Creed game up to and including the third one which is where I said okay no mas I'm 
done with this franchise. So, yeah, I've seen the different ones. This does not play just like an Assassin's Creed multiplayer. So, yeah, even if you get one, you can still, you know, playing the other will still be a fresh experience. Now, the... Let's see that... Now, basically, to you know, for the Assassin's Creed comparison, basically the assassins are like spies, and you know the assassins of that game are like spies, or yeah, both assassins and Templars in that. And the Merc plays somewhat like a first-person shooter type. You know, there are less acrobatics than in single player. It also has some Aliens vs. Predator going on, and again, I should clarify, not the most recent one, but Aliens vs. Predator 1 and 2. I have not played the most recent one yet. Now, but yeah, the Merc as the Marine, and the Spies, sometimes Alien, sometimes Predator. And yeah, it can be just, you know, not only awesome and tense and such, it can be pretty terrifying. You know, very suddenly, you'll be killed and you didn't even you know you were so sure you had checked that area but nope someone was hiding just a little you know yeah very very cool and you you know you as you rise through the ranks I already mentioned I I'm currently on rank 26 you will earn tokens which you know tokens and money in this game you know not actual money not you know not microtransactions or such, but the money you earn by grinding and playing. Yeah, those are, you know, the money you spend on both single player and multiplayer, but multiplayer, if you're buying something new, if you're not just upgrading something, you have to spend tokens on it, so you can't max out your multiplayer stats just by playing, you know, the single player and co-op. You have to actually play multiplayer in order to earn the uh, yeah the stuff. Now the this is a somewhat return to you know spies versus mercs of Pandora Tomorrow. I never played that, but it you know yeah it seems like it's very much the same. And at the very start of this, you you can use the training grounds to just, yeah, get a hang of how it works. And matches are of teams of equal numbers, two, three, or four, versus two, three, or four. And if you are, you know, if the time is running out, but a hack is underway, then you know, the time will be extended until the hack has been resolved. And, you know, at halftime, the, you know, the two teams swap sides. And basically, regardless of who you are, you know, in the game, you are either, you know, hunting down or hiding from the enemy. You are shooting or sneaking past the enemy. And, the one-click melee cuts right through Merc armor, so yeah, that's that's very cool. And you can attack, you can melee from above, from cover, or from a ledge, and also just from you know running right up to them. But those three are, you know, harder to fight back against, and that's also similar to single player, you know, above, from cover, or from a ledge. And when you are spectating, you you know spies you know, follow other spies, mercs follow security cameras, which can be taken out by spy EMP. Now, multiplayer is almost dead by this point. It's, you know, I've more or less been able to find matches each time I played, but it's, you know, you can't find someone playing every mode. Sometimes there's only one mode being played. Yeah. And again, I mean, several of the recent matches I've played, it's only been other people who just got into the game, you know. There are some, 
you know, still around who are like the highest ranks, but yeah, not a ton of people are playing it, as far as I've been able to tell. Now, the everyone in multiplayer can carry one gun, one pistol, one ability, one vision mode, and at least one grenade or other gadget type. And the you know and the stats will vary greatly of stealth and armor and you know you can change that by customizing and and it should be noted for multiplayer both sides start out with three preset ones which are in addition to the ones you can buy and customize yourself so you know even right at the start you do have choices of the different you know several of the different gadgets and abilities and some of the weapons now the there is some zip lining and abilities all have a cooldown but are otherwise unlimited and as with gadgets and grenades the cooldowns may have counters in the hands of the enemy equipment such as gas grenades versus gas masks and a trophy system that can take out any grenade or drone that comes near it which is very useful but of course also you know it's it's only useful as long as the spy can't also just be shot where he is so yeah now the I suppose that one almost covers that now, like in Assassin's Creed, if you exit a match in multiplayer, it straight up exits the multiplayer menu, which is a little annoying. There are six levels, including a bombed out hospital, a uranium mine, and a silo. Now, if you set up a private match, you, can, you get to set the rules. And the, there are a few connection problems in this. Now, teamwork is very useful in this very yeah you definitely want to be working very closely together there are situations and areas of levels where the you know one side is favored over the other it, certainly mercs can camp at the one remaining console but it's not a big issue now the spy is agile fast very much like playing single player and he sneaks and hacks his biggest gun is a submachine gun he can climb hang on you know to places to get to a hiding place the merc can't follow him there but you know once he knows where you are he can probably kill you with you know guns or grenades or such so move and find good hiding places now the you know depending on the, the spy and the equipment he can cloak he can overcharge which blows up mines and grenades in the vicinity you know or to mention EMP grenades among the visions are EMF which highlights electronics thermal which yeah shows body heat and sonar which like in you know the single player pulse and shows enemies now and they and they also have a mini radar some say the spies move too fast and are too easy but I would say mercs can stop them it's just a matter of getting the right equipment and yeah and approaching it right you again it's it's similar to Assassin's Creed you can't just play it the way you play a typical first-person shooter, for example. Now, the the spies can also drop grenades directly at their feet, and they can also get the you know arc prediction. And they also have an intel suit which marks everyone in the vicinity. They have a total of ten guns and you know bigger guns and their gadgets are defensive or 
geared towards tricking the mercs. You know, again, including cloaking, cameras that give off noise, distractions on, you know, merc detection systems and such. Now, for, for the game, maybe especially the multiplayer, I mean, it hasn't happened yet, but I figure I'm, you know, it's gonna run out of stuff to buy or, you know, customize. It's, you know, where Assassin's Creed, at least from like, certainly the third one, I, I feel like Revelations also had a bunch, but yeah, in there, there's so much customizing, you know, stuff. I mean, you can play for ages and still have more to buy. In this, there really isn't that much. And, you know, part of it is that you can't do that much to change clothing because it's, you know, there's a spy and a merc. And, I mean, some of their equipment will show up on the, you know, player model when you approach it. And certainly you can choose the type of, you know, the, the color of camouflage and such. But it's not a lot. And I... It's difficult. It's a, it's a tough nut to crack for the developers, but I do feel like they, yeah, they, they should probably have done more. That might also be part of why people aren't playing it that much anymore. Now, then we have the Mercs of Merca. They are your average first-person shooter type with bigger guns than the spies, more armor, they're slower, and they have access to assault rifles, shotguns, and light machine guns. And they have a total of 15 guns, most of them assault rifles. Their gadgets are destructive and or disable spy stuff, or, you know, help to find them. They can sprint, climb ladders, and jump over ledges, but they can't scale walls and such the way spies can. And again, they have the, the tri-rotor drone, but it has very limited battery life, of course, for multiplayer. And here you can only blow it up, but yeah, it can be quite useful. Now, th among the, you know, the, the tracking systems are a motion tracker, which is fairly straightforward, and that's where we really get into, you know, it's the marine from Alien vs. Predator, a straight-up motion tracker. You can also track by electronic signature, which includes when the the spies engage or disengage a vision mode. So, yeah. And there's also one where it's by audio, which includes gunfire. And, yeah. So, yeah, quite useful. And again, you know, yeah. Keeping in mind these versus something like cloak and sneaking around, yeah, it's they are it's it's a real chess match with you know very timed to to an extent, and then there's of course the straight up just you know having really good reflexes and being good at first person shooter, and the these you know let's see actually that's. Yeah, that is it for the Merc. Now, the modes include Classic, which which has no customization, very dark levels, and basically the Spy has a flashbang, an EMP grenade, a smoke grenade, and an infinite ammo, but one fire and then reload, stun gun. And the Merc has proximity mines, frag grenades, VX gas grenades, a resupply box, uh, adrenaline, and a you know nice big gun, in addition to a pistol, and a motion tracker and flashlight, and yeah, it's it's hide and seek with spies and mercs, and it's it's a ton of fun. And the you know sort of the main mode, which is literally called Blacklist, there are three consoles, and they have to be hacked one at a time by the spies, meaning that the longer you go, the tougher it gets. And these three consoles are also for classic. And the the spies, the spy who's hacking has to stay in, in the basic area and hide, very similar to Assassin's Creed. 
and if the hacker dies there are 20 seconds before the console is reset and if if another hacker if another spy gets to it and hacks it before that time is up then you know the hack will proceed from the same you know percentage that it already that they had already gotten to in that hack it's the most played mode and frankly sometimes the only one that's being played there is the mode called extraction where mercs have to grab a briefcase uplink control which is basically domination teams start with one uplink each and have to capture the others and if a capture is stopped the percentage is stored now and it has mixed teams and then we have team deathmatch where the teams are also mixed I should def define that mixed teams means that either team can use spies or mercs it's not just that you have team spy and team merc and each is limited to those and yeah team deathmatch it's frantic fun it's basically typical team deathmatch with the abilities of the spies and the mercs which again you know if half your team are spies and half your team is mercs then maybe they have all the different abilities right there so yeah that's that's a lot of fun and it's it's the most it's probably the most dynamic mode because it can end in a very short space of time where the others you know it can go very fast in the other modes but it does have somewhat of a an order and set rules to it where yeah team deathmatch it's yeah it's deathmatch so everything kind of goes now i suppose that pretty well covers it so yeah it's it's a lot of fun it's not quite the original Splinter Cell games but it has a lot of that there and some really cool new abilities such as tri rotor and yeah if you want a fun stealth gaming experience this is pretty good again good not great and yeah it's you know both for a for a, a third person shooter with stealth and for a more recent game and for a late game in a franchise and for a stealth game today it's pretty good I've reviewed other parts of this series the links are in the description box please rate and comment and hey if you like this video that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it